Hello, this is Christina, your librarian, with another edition of First Impressions. Today, we will be reading the first chapter of Jada Jones' Rockstar by Kelly Starling Lyons, illustrated by Vanessa Brantley Newton. Jada Jones thinks that there's nothing cooler than rocks. So when her teacher gives the class a group project on rocks and minerals, Jada knows that she is going to rock the assignment. Her only problem is finding a group of friends to work with. For Jada, rocks are easier to find than friends. Or are they? This will be Jada Jones, rock star. Chapter one. Best Friend Blues. For the first time ever, I overslept. Usually I beat everyone downstairs on school mornings, but when I woke to the sun peeking through my blinds, I just shut my eyes again. I would have kept right on sleeping if mom hadn't come into my room. Jada, she said, it's time to get up. I groaned and yanked the cover over my head. Thinking about school meant thinking about Mari. At recess, we used to take off hunting for rocks. Inky black slivers, orange hunks, perfect for writing on pavement, gray nuggets splashed with silver that shimmered in the light. Why did she have to move? Mom sat next to me on my daybed and gently pulled my fuzzy blanket back. My eyes blurred as I sniffed and tried not to cry. I turned to the wall. I know you miss Mari, she said, pulling off my sleeping scarf <clears throat> and stroking my braids. But you have lots of kids in your class who would love to be your friend. You'll see. Mom kissed my head and left so I could get ready. I washed up and slid on my jeans with deep rock stashing pockets and purple dragon t-shirt. I opened my jewelry box and picked up the heart-shaped pendant Mari gave me for my birthday. I clutched it in my hand. Her half said best, my half said friend. Even though Mari had just left Raleigh for Phoenix on Friday, I already felt like part of me was gone. For breakfast, Daddy made his specialty, homemade banana pancakes with strawberry syrup. Can I get just a tiny smile from my favorite daughter, he said, setting a flowered plate in front of me. Daddy knew that would usually make me laugh. I'm his only daughter. I tried to smile, but it felt more like a grimace, all teeth with no joy. While my little brother Jackson gobbled his pancakes, I poked at mine with my fork. Finally, I washed down a mouthful with a gulp of milk. Daddy put his hand on my shoulder. Blues can feel like they're here to stay he said softly. I knew what he meant. Daddy plays all kinds of music, hip hop, jazz, reggae, but his blues songs made me think of an aching way down deep. I wondered if the hurt of losing Mari would ever go away. But you know what's certain about the blues, he asked. I looked up at him and shook my head. They don't last forever. I thought about what daddy said on the way to school. Try to have a good day, honey, mom said as she dropped Jackson and me off at Brookside Elementary. I nodded before closing the car door behind me. Maybe it wouldn't be as bad as I thought. Maybe I could have an okay day without my best friend. I walked Jackson to kindergarten and slowly climbed the stairs to the fourth grade hallway. Miss Taylor had said that we would be starting a new science unit. And I couldn't help but get a little excited about that. 
But when I walked into my class, the first thing I saw was Mari's empty seat. I sat across from it and quickly hid my face behind my library book about different kinds of gems. Sorry, Mari is gone, Lena whispered to me as she slid into her chair. She and Carson sat at my table. We were the only group now that had three instead of four. I put down my book and looked at her instead. Daddy said you could tell a lot by someone's eyes. Her kind brown one said, I hope you're okay. Thanks, I said. Lena is cool. Her best friend is Simone. They are nuts about jump rope the way Mari and I are crazy for rocks. I thought about mom saying that I'd make new friends. Maybe I could show Lena and Simone how awesome rocks could be. During lunch, I sat across from them and waited for my chance to talk. It seemed like it would never come. Simone kept glancing at me and frowning. She chattered to Lena about everything, what she did over the weekend, what movies she wanted to see, what she planned to do when she got home. It was like she was afraid to stop talking. Finally, she eyed me cautiously and bit into her pizza. I jumped right in. What can't walk but can skip? I asked her and Lena. Huh? Lena said, popping a grape into her mouth. It's a riddle, I said. What can walk but can't, what, oh, I'm sorry. What can't walk but can skip? Lena shrugged. Simone looked annoyed. Give up? Lena nodded. A stone. It can't walk, but it can skip across a pond. I waited for them to lose it. Lena grinned. Simone rolled her eyes. Lame, she mumbled. A couple of kids giggled. I kept my eyes glued to my turkey sandwich. Mari would have loved that joke. After lunch, we lined up for recess. I chewed my bottom lip and wished I could stay inside. As soon as I saw the playground, my missing Mari ache was back. Hey, do you want to jump rope with us? Lena asked. I stank at jump rope, but the invite made me feel better. Lena and Simone were part of the bunny club, kids who could jump more than 100 times in a row. They could do single rope and double dutch. I loved their tricks, like hopping on one foot, touching the ground between jumps and jumping so fast the thumping ropes sounded like drums. She probably just wants to look for rocks, Simone answered for me. Right, Jada? Yeah, I lied. Thanks anyway, Lena. I walked to the wooded edge by the swings where Mari and I discovered our best finds. One time, we snagged a piece that looked like pyrite. Covered with orange dirt, it didn't seem like much at first, but when I shined it on my pant leg, I saw sparkling gold flecks. We didn't care if it was fool's gold. To us, it was treasure. I picked up a smooth gray stone and a jagged brown rock and stuffed them in my pocket. Nothing extra special. It was no fun searching alone. I sat on the bench and watched my classmates jump, make up songs and play kickball. Anything good? Miles asked as he waited for her, his turn to kick. He liked rocks as much as he liked sports. No, not this time. Keep looking, he said before running off to join the game. You'll find something. When we lined up to go back inside, I reached into my pocket and felt my smooth stone again. It wasn't what I was looking for, but it was pretty neat. Almost a perfect oval. Cool to the touch, and it fit right into my hand. Mari would give it a thumbs up. I bet Miles would too. Maybe Daddy was right. The blues weren't here to stay. This book is realistic fiction. 
It takes place in our real world, even though it's a made up story. There's no magic or dragons or aliens or anything like that. This book is also a chapter book about friends and school. It has some illustrations. And the main character in this book is in fourth grade. If this sounds like the kind of book you'd be interested in, here are a couple of read-alikes. There's a second Jada Jones book called Jada Jones Class Act, also by Kelly Starling Lyons. There's L. Ray Jakes is Not a Chicken by Sally Warner, which is also a book about friends and school. There's the Zoe and Sassafras books by Asta Citro. These books are also about a girl who loves science, but they do have a little bit of a magical element to them. In every book, Zoe explores something scientific alongside a magical creature. And then there's also the Clementine books by Sarah Pennypacker. All of these books are series, which means if you like one of them, there are more to read.